McCarlin's through, he might go for it, still going, trying to barge his way through, goes to the oh, what a goal! Arriving Ryan O'Neill from an almost impossible angle, and that's the rousing score I'm now we're looking for. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Night podcast. We're looking forward to a huge game this weekend. It's Armagh against Donegal in the box of Athletic Grounds on Sunday at 3 o'clock. A top of the table clash that will more or less seal promotion for the winner. And we're looking ahead to it with former Donegal footballer John Horn. John, how's things heading into this game? It's a huge one. My very good, Sean. I know we're we're all happy to Nigal here at the minute. Uh, Jimmy's won a matches and everything's good in the everyone everything's good in the hood. So we're looking forward to Sunday, absolutely. It's it's only February time, John, but this is such a massive game already. As you said, Jimmy's winning matches and Armagh winning matches here as well. Both teams three from three so far. That's that's right. And I suppose maybe at the start of the league, uh Donegal and Armagh possibly were people's favourites to go up, but you never know. Like you know, Division Two is never easy, and there's plenty of good teams there. But the way it started off, both teams have won the first three games, so it's looking it's looking good for both teams. And I suppose, as you said, there, whoever wins on Sunday, it's going to be an eight points and more or less guaranteed promotion. Uh, whoever loses is probably still going to be in a good enough place, but they're going to, you know, it's going to be a little bit sticky to get to get to get. To, get promotion but if they don't slip up again they'll probably get there so all to play for and you know if you look at the score difference i think Armagh are just a point ahead of the goal so it's well matched for a big game on sunday and i know it's only february but the way with the split season now and the season's so condensed you know everything's coming thick and fast and you know teams are looking to get a bit of momentum and you know boys are injured they're missing games they could miss two or three games where before you might have only missed one game and you know everyone's keen to kneel down their place in the team and Managers want to get a bit of rhythm going and into, into their team and get boys on the pitch that are going to be playing come championship and you know patterns of play and all that there. So I think you know for Jim McGinnis definitely, you know he'll be going all out to win and no doubt Kieran McGinney and Armagh will be the same. There'll be no quarter given or asked for on, on Sunday in the Athletic Grounds. I think promotion is such a big thing too. This year both teams come down from Division One last year. I know from an Armagh perspective. Like this Armagh team and, and Kieran McGinney spent so long trying to get up to Division One, spent a few years there and they were disappointed to get relegated. So I assume Donegal is the same. They want to get back up into that Division One and playing the best teams week out, uh, week in, week out come next year. Well, this is it, and it's you know it's it's Jim McGinnis's first maybe we don't know maybe a three or four year project. So he'd be he'd, he'd be very keen to get up into Division One and then push on next year against the better teams week in week out. And try and develop this. You know, it's a relatively young Donegal team that he's taken over. All right, you've got you've got a bit of experience with Paddy McBerty, Ryan McHugh, who had played on the gym before. But I think more or less that's it. So a lot of young players and, and a relatively young team, relatively now. Some you know some of them have been around four or five years. But I think McGinnis has got them enough of them at the right age bracket that he's looking, you know, for a three or four year project. So it's important for him to get into Division One and challenge against the Dublins and Kerrys and Tyrone's and Derry's of this world week in week out. And to try and push on there, and you know, to try and listen. I don't know if Sam Maguire is realistic, but he goes, you have to aim high. And if an Ulster Championship comes along the way and you get a couple of good games from Co Park, you know, but where Donegal were last year, you know, anything like that there will be a bonus. And if we can get that there this year, I think it'll set us well up for next year. So, you know, every game is important. And getting back to Division One is, is key for Donegal, I think, under Jim McGuinness, because if they didn't, for whatever reason, if they lost on Sunday, and slipped up somewhere else against Louth or, you know, Kildare. I know this, they're not going well. Mead, you know, anything could happen. And, you know, all of a sudden, the, you know, the wind's gone out of the seals and you're going into face Derry and Celtic Park in the championship and you haven't got promoted. Just, uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll be where Donegal wants to be. So a lot of emphasis on this game on Sunday, absolutely. And we've mentioned Jim McGuinness a couple of times. John, we're going to have to obviously speak about him. He's He's... Lifted the county again, I think it's fair to say. And I suppose, what what's the feeling in Donegal since his return? Because I know you mentioned there that Sam Maguire maybe isn't a realistic target this year, but there's a lot of people outside of Donegal that you know are starting to build build them up and talk them into that bracket again. But I suppose, what what's the feeling in Donegal now that Jim has returned? Yeah, well, it's interesting, Sean. You know, you, you do chat to some people, and they would 
you know, they'll say uh, that, no, he doesn't have the same players as he had before, you know. But I was talking to Johnny McLoon from Glenthys, and Johnny would have played a bit for the county, no more than myself, just a bit. But he was a great club player for Neve Collin and Glenthys. Johnny has five or six championships. And I was chatting to him one day in that Kenny just over the Christmas. And we both agreed that, you know, when McGillis took over the first time, Denny Gall, you know, a lot of the players that we had, and I played with them, you know, they, they weren't definitely they weren't proven. They weren't proven like the players. All right, uh, Carl Lacey was exceptional, Michael Murphy, but the rest of them were journeymen to a certain extent at that stage. Had won a national league in two thousand and seven, but you know they maybe never fulfilled their potential. But if you had asked any all people in two thousand and ten that Jim or two thousand and eleven that Jim McGinnis was going to win all Ireland in two thousand twelve, they would have said absolutely not. You know, absolutely not. Well, I would have said it anyway. So you know that achievement was phenomenal. So can he do it again with this group of players? People are saying because of that reason. I think some people are saying. He can. He's done it before. He'll do it again. It'll be. It'll. It'll be interesting to see. I just don't know. I hope I'm wrong. You know. I, I, but I do think that what he can do is he can make Donegal very competitive. He can make us a top six side. You know, maybe be below the Derry, below the Kerry and Dublin, and then we're in with a fighting chance against the rest. And on our day, we could beat any any of them. And you know, that means that you could get to an All Ireland semi final. And maybe get to a final, and you, you never know then. So the McGinnis factor is absolutely huge because it's just given the whole county a lift from from the dark place that we were in after Paddy Carr was kind of sacked by the players and Aidan O'Rourke had to take over. And you know we we regrouped somewhat in the championship, but it was still everyone was pessimistic. There was the row with Carl Lacey in the academy. You know everything everything. It was a bit of a mess. Crow Park were called in to do a review of the whole thing, and you know we were not in a good place. So it was vital. That the county board got McGinnis back. Now there was a good, there was, there was always a good chance. The word was there that McGinnis will come back. McGinnis will come back, but you still had to go out and get the deal done and get him back. And since he's come back, the whole thing has just lifted. You know, uh, the mood in the county with GA people has just lifted because they know that Jim will get buy-in from the players. Anything he asks, the players will give him. And if they don't give it to him, they'll just be gone. You know, he he won't mess around. There'll be no bullshit with him. Uh, you're either, you're either in or you're out. And whatever he asks. The players will do so from that point of view you know these manic training sessions that we would have heard about before you know we're hearing about them again like i was chatting to the player just maybe back in december time and you know i think they were on the pitch for nearly three hours in convoy one night of training and i says they no i said it wasn't born at all i said it was great a lot of it was football 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 but they were running like hell with the football you know so the fitness levels are way up there at the minute probably more than other counties which has maybe given us a good start to the season but uh the McGinnis factor is just it's the X factor for Donegal, and that's what we needed because he's done he's been there, he's proven himself, and you know, everyone in the county believes in him and he's getting, you know, he's got all his backers on board. The county board will give him whatever he wants. You know, now it may cost a lot of money, but when you're winning, everything's great. So for the time being, we're all happy. On the squad, John, he's got the likes of like Ryan McHugh's back this year. Um well Oshin Gallen's obviously back fit as well, but there's there's no player that I suppose well there's one player that turned Jim McGinnis down was Michael Murphy but anybody else that's available for selection I assume they're all part of the panel. They're all back. Everyone that 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 missed last year for whatever even there was two the two O'Donnell brothers in, in our own club St Julian she and Niall took a year out last year. They're back as you say. Ray McHugh kind of took a year out, stroke injured with work away in America. He's back. Uh, you know, there's just other boys. Uh, that are just more, they just seem to be more committed. Uh, there's a few more now at the top of my head, I just can't think, but they're all back. Who else was missing last year? Michael Langan was kind of injured and they, they played him that day up in, against Down and he got injured and, and you're in the championship and he was a big loss. But there was them stories going around all the time with Paddy Carr. The players just weren't putting it in. You know, you, you can blame Paddy Carr, whatever you want, but I suppose our players don't believe in the manager, they're not going to give the commitment and that seemed to be what was going on last year and, you know, the results prove that by getting relegated and having a poor enough championship. And I suppose, John, tell us a bit about Donegal's style of play, but because obviously as Division 2 teams don't get maybe as much air time, um, but they were live on TV last week against Fermanagh on the BBC A player, and this first half was a, a good contest. It was six each at half time, and Donegal just ran away with it in the second half. But I suppose any clips we're seeing, all the talk on Twitter and different um, podcasts that we're tuning into 
it's it's this Preston game while in 2011 slash 12 they were sitting back in their defensive shell and breaking out in the counter. He seems to be go just man for man pressing. Um, now seems to be his style, and that's that's hard for teams to play against. That's hard, yeah, exactly, Sean. It is hard for teams to play against, and uh, you know it was very evident, say against Cork in the first game of the National League in Balbuffet. Now, didn't all the hard to beat in Balbuffet and long journey for Cork, but like Cork had no idea what to do. It, it was dreadful, like for an inter county team. Back to the goalkeeper, everyone pushed up. The goalkeeper had nowhere to go. Comes out, bit of pressure, kicks it away. You know, didn't all get the ball over the bar. Cornerback gets it, you know, put him under pressure, doesn't know what to do, gives the ball away, same thing, then he goes, go. Sure, from that point of view, you'd, you'd wonder what some of these inter county teams are doing at training, but they, they don't, you know, they have no plan B. So, yeah, the high press is putting a lot of pressure on teams. Uh, and, you know, but the problem there is that good teams will break it down. Like, if you look at Derry, you know, the run of power they have, they'll not be afraid to just take the goal forwards on, coming out of defence, McKinnis and Connor Dorley, these boys, and go away up the field. And, and and there'll be there'll be gaps there for doing all. So it's interesting again. It's like the high press, yes, but I don't see it as as an all out press, and he's going to keep it, you know, all the time. I think at times they will drop back. Another thing, what they're doing, Sean, is that you know they are moving the ball forward a lot, lot quicker. That's very, very evident. You know, we went through this cycle and doing all, and every other county was the same a possession football. Once they get it, you know, they get the ball. And sometimes the man might put the hand up, you know, the way the dubs do and slow it down and they have this over and back. And, you know, they're just letting the other team get back inside the 45 and then you try and break them down. And, like, Denny Gall weren't great at doing that. But now, as soon as they, like, it is a bit reminiscent of 2011, 2012. As soon as if, 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 if the opposition has come up to the 45, say, and then Denny Gall turn them over or maybe around midfield, which you've seen against Fermanagh, like, they just tick off. The whole team just ticks off running up the field and they're trying to hit the team on, 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 on the counter attack and what they are doing too sean is they're looking up a lot quicker they kick the ball into mcberty and kick it into gallon you know for a long time denny gall would never kick the ball it was all hand passing hold on to possession don't take a risk don't take a chance on the mcginnis this year they are taking a chance like uh, this like when well, you see daryl oh, daryl wheels go against fermanagh where he, he chipped them from outside the 45 Brilliant. But the next goal was McBurdy, where they where they turned for man over again at midfield. McBurdy got on the ball around the halfway line. Uh Ashen Gallon was way in inside the 21, nearly on his own. And like McBurdy just says, right, I'm going to hoof this as long and as far as I can and try and get into Gallon. And he did, and it worked. Now the two Fermanor players, defenders nearly got it. But you know, last year McBurdy had a goal back to half back up the field, and just you know, the whole thing would have been so slow. But they are definitely trying to kick the ball quicker. And even coming out of defence, Sean, even if you watch the court game, Ray McHugh, a couple of times, he might get the ball inside the 21 under a bit of pressure, but he'd get his head up and he'd give the ball a 30 or 40 yard kick pass out the field to a Denny Gall player. So there's, you know, the new phrase now is risk and reward. And that's, you know, Denny Gall are certainly playing a bit more risky. But with that there, there's rewards of getting the ball up the field quicker. So, you know, he's definitely brought a different style, you know, from, 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 it's not just about this mad pressing, that's part of it, but De Denny Gall are definitely moving the ball a lot quicker and using the foot a good bit more, which is great to see. And I think uh, I'd love to credit the Twitter page, and I can't remember who it was, John, but I think they put a, a video out either today or yesterday, and it was um, just a few clips of Denny Gall, and one of them was a score against Calvin, possibly an Oshin Gallon one where Sean Patton took the kick out and kicked out over the press and there was a load of space in behind him. Um, that's that's a weapon that it's not Jim McGuinness's weapon. We've known about Sean Patton for a good few years now, from probably from that Michael Langan goal against her own, I think it was the 2020 yes. Ulster Championship. Mm -hmm. He he is a, a wand of a, a, a boot there on him, John, that if Armad do decide to press up on a kick out, there's always that threat he can go out over the press and find somebody in behind in space. Absolutely. And, you know, it'd be fascinating to, to see as the, as the year develops, how will pattern be used by McGuinness, you know, because McGuinness is coming from the soccer background and everyone's kind of waiting for it to see, you know, what is Jim going to bring different? How is he going to change it up from the last time? But we can always, already see with, with the high press and, and the kicking the ball and moving it on. But, you know, it's, when the tactics come to, I think, you know, when we played Derry, 
and Celtic Park, what's McGinnis going to do? Because we're going to be the underdogs. They are top team at the moment. Some people rate them number one in the country. So, you know, it's going to be a different proposition. No disrespect to playing Armagh or playing Cavan or playing Cork in the National League. I think they are the So it's going to be fascinating. But Sean Patton, Sean Patton's kick out is phenomenal. Like he's a club, he's a club made of mine in St. Dunes. And, you know, some of the, you know, it's just, as you say, he's a, nearly a freak of nature that, that kick out he can do. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, people now, uh, the soccer, you know, the soccer talk, is McGuinness going to set traps for teams? So is he going to set a trap with a kick out of maybe putting Michael Langan and, you know, Michael Langan calls for the ball and Keane Thompson goes that side too. And the next thing, Patton kicks it down the middle and takes them all out. And as you say, you know, Ash and Gallon or someone's running on to like the, 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 you know, the brilliant example of that, I suppose, was 2014 against Dublin and Crow Park that day when Donegal were magnificent and big Paul Durkin was kicking them out and Neil Gallagher was flicking them on to the runners and the whole Dublin defence was wide open and Donegal ran through for three goals. You know what I mean? So, McGinnis will always have a plan, so we'll be able to see. We mightn't see it on, on, on Sunday against Armagh. He might be keeping his uh, powder dry for the area in Celtic Park. Yeah, maybe maybe not want to give too much away just yet. John is still early in the year, so it's still February. But um, we mentioned the likes of Oshin Gallen there, Paddy McBurty. Donegal's scoring power is is really strong, John, because McBurty and, and Gallen there, the two go-tos there, the two players that Armagh will be man-marking. Um, I would imagine Aidan Falker maybe on McBrady and Paddy Burns possibly on Oshin Gallon, but Donegal can score from anywhere. Michael Langan coming forward from midfield there, Thompson, Ren McHugh, Darrow Boyle from the half back line. Like the there's everybody that can just chip in what score there throughout the, the Donegal team. Yeah, I think that that's that's true, and that's you know, this mad fitness that they have at the minute suits that because they're all running up the field together. And you know, I think another thing too, you know, on the McGinnis thing. I think it's refreshing to see. I think he's encouraging players to have a shot. You know, I think it was. We all know again that it was over. You know, complicated where only the shooters could shoot, and you had to be inside a certain place to shoot, and no one else would. And backs would come up the field, and they would just stop and turn around. So I think McGinnis is encouraging players to shoot. Like against Cork in the first half, I think that we scored twelve points. I think out of fourteen shots, now we had a strong breeze, but some of the scores were phenomenal against Cork and Balbuffet. Uh, or Doherty from 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 Leave Connell, like a man of the match, he kicked three unbelievable points in the in the first half and centre forward. He's another player who's playing well, slightly underrated, not 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 probably well known on the national stage yet. Ashing Gallon was absolutely phenomenal in the club championship last year, which a lot of people in Donegal were waiting to happen because he had a bad run of injuries over the years. So he really came into himself last year, continued into the club championship. And it's continued it on now for Donegal. So, you know, we're, we're expecting a lot of Ashing Gal and I think McGinnis will put a lot on him. Paddy McBurdy sometimes is drifting out the field, which it seems to be suiting him and linking up the play because Paddy's not the paciest player, very strong, very left footed, but he's kind of coming out, getting a bit of space, playing a one two, and then he can swing that left foot over the bar. Ray McHugh, as you said, Daryl Wade. Michael Langan started the last day, that's his first start of the year. Phenomenal player on his day. Again, Donegal fans expecting big things from Michael Langan. Uh, some days he's, he can be phenomenal, other days not as good. So, you know, a bit of consistency for Michael Langan. Kieran Thompson, one, wand of a left foot, uh, somewhat underrated player as well. So, Denny Gall have plenty of scoring powers. And I think, you know, I don't want to keep going on about Derry, but I think in some ways Denny Gall might be a bit like Derry, that, you know, Shane McGuigan's a standout player for, for Derry, but everyone else chips in and, and, and you know, as I said, some people are rating them as the number one team in the country. They're running power from everywhere. I think all may be slightly the same with Ashton Gallon being the main man at the minute, Paddy McBerty uh, as number two, and then plenty of other players that can chip in from, from the half forward line, midfield, half back. So uh the the one the one that we concern we would have even chatting to people at the match the last day in O'Donnell Park against Manas free taker you know we're not just brilliant on the freeze even with 45s where nowadays you know a lot of teams if you get a 45 you know say 10 yards either side of the goal post that's nearly nearly given that someone can put it on the ground and kick it over sean patton's not great off the ground for a goalkeeper he doesn't take too many for Donegal, even for the club so you know ashing gallon takes them but he, he's not you know he's not a michael murphy off the ground yet so that's a slight concern for some Donegal supporters is that you know freeze with a bit of distance in them, we're not just brilliant on them yet. So hopefully we can improve on that as the year goes on. Or Mark can foul out the field then. <laughs> if you foul out the field now, we don't want to put it over. <laughs> you know, we'll see how, how, how that works out. 
Joel obviously Sunday. It's it's actually Armand Donegal's second meeting this year. They met in the first round of the Mechanic Cup, and um, Armand sent uh, an experimental team up to Bali Buffet that night and under twenty one slash um, experimental team. So I was just I was saying the offer before we started recording that having read Jim McGuinness's book a couple of times and listening to player interviews that played you know under Jim McGuinness like Sam and McGee and players like that. He, he used every little thing that he could to stir up something in the Donegal players. And I was just wondering, the fact that Armagh sent a, a young experimental team up to Bally Buffet that night and Donegal fielded probably as strong a team as they could. Gallon, McBrady, Langan all played that night. Would Jim McGuinness feel that Armagh disrespected Donegal that night? And that's going to be something that's going to be mentioned in training this week and mentioned in the changing rooms. Or Am I reading too much into it, maybe? It's hard to know, Sean. He possibly might, you know, he might be more that, yeah, they did respect him because that was the first, and, uh, and I went up myself with the, t- the two sons wanted to go, so we went up, and like, there was a massive crowd there, there was nearly 4,000 there. And next thing I didn't really, because I said afterwards, if I had a, known it was there, my under 20 team, I don't think I would have bothered giving me 15 euros to the Ulster Council. But we went up better with a big crowd, yeah, but, uh, you know, it was there, my under 20 team. and, and uh, So uh, was it disrespectful? Possibly. Will he use it as motivation? I don't know. Uh, but as you say, you know, he, he might he might use everything in the book, but I think maybe it's a bit early in the year for, for that there. He might be keeping his powder dry, as I said before, for the championship. But you wouldn't know. Like it is a big game, as we said at the start. It's you know, it's it's the biggest game of the of the league so far. And maybe at the start of the league before you know, before a ball was kicked, we would have said that the league all and Armagh were maybe the favourites to go up. And here they are in this battle. So whoever wins, as you said, Sean, at the start is going to be in the very Good position for promotion, almost guaranteed. So there's a lot on the line. So listen, McGinnis could use, you know, he, he could use it surely. Put a bit of manners on those Armad boys for disrespecting us. <laughs> I'm sure nothing would surprise us when McGinnis, I think, at this stage. But um, John, just on Armagh, I suppose, what, what's what's your opinion on Armagh? How, how do you see Armagh? Because as we've mentioned, they were relegated last year. Very unlucky in those the final, the land um, quarter final against Monaghan as well. Penalties will not mention um, penalties or talk too long about them. But how how's your feelings in Armagh? Do you see them going in the right direction, or how how do you rate them? It's hard to know, Sean. Uh, a couple of years ago, I would have definitely said that you know Geezer had to go. I just didn't see what he was bringing. You know, he he had, he had achieved. Listen, it's easy for me to sit here and say that he achieved nothing. But like, you know, they hadn't won hadn't won an Ulster title. You know, all right, getting the Division One is okay and getting the Pro Power, but they didn't get the All Ireland semi final. Got beaten penalties a couple of times. I just don't know. I thought, you know, with that group of players, maybe they, maybe they needed something different, a new voice. But as you know, as we said beforehand off air, who do you get? You know, that was the problem with Donegal last year when when. Rory Cavanagh stepped or didn't take the job, and McGinnis wasn't taking it. Who who do you get? Like Malachi O'Rourke was always going to stay with Glenn, you know. Mickey Hart's now gone, you know, to you know from from Louth to Derry. Like and top quality inter county managers aren't that plentiful, you know. And then therefore you're going taking a punt on someone else. Now what I what I always found interesting about our man was that you would hear people, you know, saying that. The players have great time for Kieran McGinley and the players love him. And of course, he's an icon in Armagh. He captained them to win the All Ireland, and, and that's brilliant. But, you know, sometimes just because the players like you and think you're great, you know, doesn't mean to say you're a great manager. Sometimes, you know, it could be too close. I, I don't know. Like, I'm only expecting that it could be too too close to the players. And, you know, sometimes it would take something else a, a new face with a new voice and, and, a, and a different, a different you know, view on the whole thing that might have drawn Armagh. Freshen things up and might have been better for Armagh. So I don't know. I think Armagh, they're good, surely. Uh, are they good enough to win an All Ireland? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, are they good to win, good enough to win an Ulster title? Probably, absolutely, because they, they, they went close against Derry and they're on the easy side of the draw this year. They're away from Donegal, Derry, and Tyrone, so they can get back to North. And on their day, they're brilliant footballers. But you just sometimes wonder, you know. What's the game plan? Kieran Dollar, he's there. Sometimes it, you know, they run it a lot. They don't kick it into Rain O'Neill enough. You know, listen, it's easy for us to say here. You don't know what's going on, but sometimes you just, you know, are they getting the best out of them group of players that they have? And I, I don't know. I don't know. 
You mentioned Rain O'Neill, obviously we don't really know he hasn't played, but I think a big thing for Armagh this year and, and for Kier McGinney as well is having everybody at his disposal because I know last year like Arshin O'Neill was out injured, now Grimley, Tiernan Kelly, Kieran Mackin, there was a, a, a four or five Mark Shields was out injured, Kieran O'Hanlon as well. So even players maybe not guaranteed starters, strong panelists, you know, squad members were all out injured. So I think this year is Maybe the first time under Kieran McGinney that he is everybody to pick from when Rain O'Neill returned to the 26th last week, Andrew Mernon back into the starting team. So I think if, if everybody could get on the field, which is um, every manager's dream, obviously, to have the full hand to pick from. But if Armagh can get everybody on the field, John, do you think are they a real force to be reckoned with? No, I, I think so, absolutely. And you, and you mentioned there uh, Andrew Mernon and... Uh, I was chatting to a colleague of mine, I'm, I'm a principal in a special school here near Kenny, and Eddie Martin from Drummond Tees, the principal of the special school in, in uh, Dundalk, and Michal Moley from Cross McLean's is the principal of the special school in uh, Dr- Drogheda. So we meet up a couple of times a year and the crack does be good at different things. But Eddie Martin, you know, it was a great time for Andrew Martin and couldn't understand why he took him off last year and lost the final, you know. And uh, so sometimes you, maybe you could question some of the, you know, team selections of Kieran McGinney and some of the substitutions at times. But as you said, all them players, like the way the condense, the way the season is now and the game's coming thick and fast, you need a full panel. If you have a full panel of players, you know, boys are going to get injured. If you've got strong players to come off the bench or to start the next game because of injuries, that's a big, big help. And the stronger panel you have, the further you're going, you're going to go in the championship. So them players that you listed them, showing them five or six players that are back this year that geezer didn't have last year it's going to be massive it helps training you know there's more competition for for places to make the first 15 to make the first 26 so you know that's all good for for our man that's all good for for the for the buzz and and and, and the panel and having lads fighting for their place and that you know there's competition for every place and there's boys hungry to get back on the team that maybe missed out for a year or two with with injury so you know us you know really like you know Great player, great potential, and you'd like to see that he could add something to our man this year, absolutely. Tiernan Kelly, you know, must have missed last year and they hit the suspension there too, you know, and he went through a, a tricky time, but a good player too. So all them lads have something to offer. Them Mackin boys, you know, big, strong men around the half-back line, midfield, uh, Grimley as well, you know what I mean? Like big players with plenty of experience. So if all them boys are back fully fit and they're fighting for their place, it can only be good for our man and strengthen their hand, absolutely. I suppose the subs bench too as well, John. I think did three or four during all subs score against Fermanagh as well. And you talked about Armagh, like Oshin O'Neill, Jordy O'Burns all performing well, Tiernan Kelly off the bench as well the other day. Aidan Nugent's been introduced, Jason Duffy and Ross McQuillan in the last few games as well, um, coming back into the fold. So the benches could be crucial here on Sunday as well if it's a tight game heading into the last you know 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, and I suppose the player... Uh... But then he got maybe are sweating on a bit of the manager's own Ban Gallagher, like he, he he missed the last game. He started the game before, or he came on against Cork early enough at before half time and uh the cabin game then. But he was injured for the Fermana game. So he, he he's a bit of a concern now. I'm hearing that you know his injury could be serious enough. You know, when, when I say serious enough, you know, you could be talking weeks, but at this time of the year he, he could miss a number of games. Uh but the other big player that Donny Gall are waiting for is Jason McGee to come back. He got a bad uh, knock against Niall Morgan in the McKenna Cup, the clash going for a ball, and he hasn't been back since now. I'm hearing that he's not far away, so he's a he can be a big player for the league. All uh, Jason McGee at midfield, you know, along with Michael Langan or Kieran Thompson. So, if he was fit, maybe to get a few minutes on Sunday, it'd be a big thing for Denny Gall, big help. But Denny Gall's, yeah, uh, Jack McKelvey came on and for the second half of the last day and got two points. Uh, I'm trying to think now who else came on. Uh, it's just uh Hugh McFadden come on, I'm not sure if he scored or not. Hugh, he, no, he didn't score, he came on, he did, he did okay, yeah. Uh Niall O'Donnell from our own club now he wasn't far away. I think he did the warm up in that last week. He wasn't on the twenty sixth, but he wasn't far away. His brother Shane was sick last week, so he wasn't there. He's played all the games for Jimmy Gunners up until this. So if them boys are fit and coming back, it's gonna strengthen the Donegal panel, absolutely. And you know, the way it's gone now, like you, you, you need you need everyone, and, and you everyone uses the five or six subs, and that's just the way it is because the pace of the game has just gone through the roof. And players, you know, you need fresh legs coming in after any time in the, from the second from half time onwards. You're going to start introducing, you know, fresh legs, and it's, it's very important. 
And I think Brendan McCall, he seems to be the, the Donegal go-to man marker at the back, John. And just wonder who who do you see him picking up? Because if Ryan O'Neill was starting, I would assume he would go to Ryan O'Neill. But the fact O'Neill's not there, is it going to be, you know, does he go to Campbell? Does he stay inside and pick up Turbot? Ashton Connolly's playing really well at the minute. Does he maybe go on to him? Or who do you see? Who who I suppose the, the question is, who's the main forward that you see Donegal having to shut down? Yeah, well, I think looking at the game that last day from uh, the Kildare game on, on TG Caha, that I thought Turbot was very good and he is a good player when he's on form and he, he seems to be hitting a bit of form. So, you know, I think maybe he could be a bit, he's a bit smaller than McCall and he's a bit quicker than McCall. So, you know, maybe one of the cornerbacks, Mark Cornell, came on at half time for Denny did very well and he he's normally on the team. So, you know, maybe he might mark uh, Turbot and maybe. Brendan McCall go on Supi Campbell if he's playing in the in the forward line. So where someone you know that's not gonna well, not gonna kill him with pace, you know, he he might he might pick him up. But you know, the way it's going, it's 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 fluid and players are playing all over the plate, all over the pitch. And you know, Daryl Whale at number seven on his back the last day and ends up scoring two, three, and he was kind of playing the half back but more around the midfield and license to go forward when Denny got the ball and gets on the ball and kicks three points in the first half and then two goals in the second half. So, you know, the, the way the game's going, you just have to be, you know, on your toes and, you know, you could be switched after five minutes to pick up someone else. just depends how it's going. And John, just before I let you go, um, I have a feeling how you're going to answer this, but I'll ask you it anyway. Who do you see coming out on top on Sunday? Will home advantage play a part, do you think? I think home advantage will play a part. Uh I was up at the game last year in the athletic grounds and on the Saturday night, and like Denny Gall were struggling at that stage, but they still came back into it near the end. And you know, I think it was a two points in at the end, and at one stage, Denny Gall had brought it back to a point. And like Denny Gall would not be near as good last year, in my opinion, as they are this year. So, you know, that maybe is, is cause for optimism, but. I think it'll be tight, Sean. You know, this is a big step up for Denny Gall. There's no doubt about it. I'm not blowing smoke up your up your arse to say that there. But like Cork were very poor. Cavan decent put Denny Gall, you know, ran Denny Gall close, although it was it was in Breffney. But like Denny Gall only won by a point, but maybe a couple of points better than Cavan. We got it easy enough last week against Fermanagh uh, after half time once the goal went in. So this is definitely a, a step up for Denny Gall. I think a step up physically. I think Arma are on the road a long time. Their players are well developed. They know what they're doing. They've been around the block. So from that point of view, it's going to be a big test for Denny Gall. Uh, I don't see much in it, Sean. I'd say, you know, a point or two either way. Hopefully Denny Gall, but listen, I wouldn't be surprised. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it was a draw. I think it's got a draw written all over it, you know, and that would put both of them on seven points. Maybe would both teams be happy with the point? Probably, you know. Keep keep the unbeaten run going and keep the confidence going and both of them will still be top of the table. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a draw. Yeah, I, th- I think a draw is a good shout too. But I'm a bit like yourself, John. Hopefully it, it swings our miles away, but there could be only one or two points the difference yeah. here. Yeah. And possibly, you never know, we could be looking forward to a league final between the two in a couple of weeks too. If- well, that's it, you know, but it's just uh, what way do the dates work then for championship? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, you you, you like uh, a league final, surely in Crow Park and a big crowd, and both teams go at it. But the, the championship, so so, I, I don't think any of them spend the week after in the championship. So I think it's two could. weeks. Yeah. So you know, that this is the problem with the league. Everyone wants to do well, in it, but then come a final, does anyone want to win it? You know, uh, what both teams kind of say. You know, what, what we're going to rest a couple of our key players. We don't definitely don't want to get them injured before the first round of the championship. I suppose Denny Gall. Definitely wouldn't want to get them injured before the dairy game, but that's what Sean that, that's a long way down the line. Uh, <laughs> ho- hopefully, from both our perspectives, that both Donegal and Armagh are in the league fan, that means we're both going up and it'll, it'll be a good, a good start to the year and we can look forward to the championship then, you know. So, uh, please God, that's been the way it goes. But anyway, uh, before we go, Sean, I must mention a few uh, my old friends from St Mary's in Belfast, the boys from uh, South Armagh, Paul Toner there and Shane Lennon. And the O'Hare's Liam and and, and uh Keir uh Keir O'Hare down there in Cully Hanna. They had a big year with Cully Hanna one on the one in the all Ireland intermediate. So Paul Tonner was all over Facebook and social media there for, for days and days. So uh I might see him about the athletic grounds anyway. I'll hear him before I see him. Uh with a couple of good nights in Cully Hanna, a couple of up for the match uh, preview yeah. shows, and Paul was the end of a few jokes. So he was so, <laughs> no better man, no better man. <laughs> 
<laughs> John, good man here. Cheers. Appreciate you coming on and a great chat with you um, regarding this game. And as I say, possibly a, a league final to look forward to as well between the two counties. And who knows, maybe an Ulster final as well. But we'll not worry about that. We'll worry about two points on Sunday first. John, it was great to hear from you and appreciate you coming on. Thanks very much, Sean. You're welcome. Through, he might go for it, still going, trying to barge his way through. Goes to the shot, what a goal! Arriving, Ryan O'Neill from an almost impossible angle, and that's the rousing score I'm now we're looking for. This is Connor Turbot, kicks this one in, oh, that's absolutely superb.